Let's do this dynamite report. Because there's a lot to talk about. MJF Adam Cole in a title eliminator, which is noted. Everyone thought this was going to go, uh, you know, Adam Cole winning and setting up the match, but they did not. They did a 30 minute draw, and it was a great match. They had all sorts of, all sorts of. You know what's funny about it is, I mean, anybody here think that this is the end of this feud? Raise your hand. Nobody? Okay. Well, I watched this match, and sometimes you see a match, and you know that they're going to build to a second match. And so you can see that they hold this back or they hold that back because they're saving something for the next... uh... They did not do that here. I mean, they did everything in this match, not the least of which was MGF doing a flying elbow off the post through a table outside which, by the way, looked like he crushed this poor bloke. And we had... Uh, yeah, I don't know what Dave was so upset about. Like, to me, taking a move on the apron is far worse than what MJF did, considering he landed right in the middle of Cole. Just crushed him. We hit the sunrise. There was a uh, tombstone on the apron. There was... The cross arm on the apron? Everything. I mean, it was, yeah, the cross arm German on the apron, everything. And they had a great Eddie Guerrero spot at the end where, you know, MGF tried to throw the belt and take a bump, but then the Rev actually didn't wake up, and he realized, I just gave this guy the belt. Bryce and then is great. Cole whacked him and, and uh, hit the boom, and MGF still kicked out. And finally, uh, he hit the sunrise and the boom, and the bell rang for the time limit draw. And then Cole wanted five more minutes. MGF responds by sliding out of the ring, heading to the back, He refuses to give him his second match. So given that it's going to be MJF and Tanahashi at Forbidden Door, and they don't have another pay-per-view until uh, either the end of August or September, whichever one they're going to do their match on, I would presume that this is a way to kind of hold that off for a while because this is either, to me, going to be the Wembley main event or one of the Wembley main events or the uh, all-out main event, either all-out or all-in. I think it's going to be uh, this championship match. So we got time. Got to do something in the meantime. Then we had a Sammy interview, which is funny because, you know, this is another one. People tell me, Sammy's not going babyface. It's just for this feud. No, Sammy's going babyface. That's been the plan for well over a month now. And, you know, he was doing babyface promos. Everything he was doing was babyface. And he's still getting booed. Although they're trying to convince you to cheer him, is what they are doing. And part of that is Jericho coming out and going full heel. Didn't let the people sing his song. Finally. Had it cut off. And uh, long story short, he and Sammy had a big argument. And they agreed to do a tag match. It's going to be Darby and Sting versus Chris Jericho and Sammy Guevara next week on the show. Which is a big match. Yeah. They played up Jericho and, and uh, Sting. It's a real big deal. What is Sammy going to do? Is he going to go full babyface here? When's the split going to happen? But uh, that's the direction here. Sammy is a babyface. Had the Mogul Embassy against Sting, Darby, Orange Cassidy, and Keith Lee. And uh, there was... This was a bowling shoe at points. Oh, my God. But Who they let Sting work with anybody other than Swerve? Do not put Toa near Sting. It's what I said yesterday. It scares me. Well, Sting and Toa got in there together, and they didn't know what they were doing. <laughs> but they, they both lived. And then uh, Cage went for the F5. Orange hit the punch. Sting hit the death drop, pinned him. Huge pop for the finish. And, uh, you know, there had been rumors that the first episode of Collision was going to be finally... Finally, Swerve versus Keith Lee, and there is no indication that that is going to happen. I don't think this match is ever going to happen. I think this is a rib by Tony Khan. I think it's never happening. We're never going to see it. I'm good with it at this point. Just let it slide away and die. It's kind of like Cage's face paint. Don't, I don't know about that. Don't do that. Then we had Austin and Colton doing a promo challenging the Hardys. <laughs> to determine who's the best brother tag team in all of AEW. After their interplay together on that promo, I'm saying it's the guns right now. <laughs> they should be Bullet Club. I hope they are. 
Then we had Wardlow and Jake Hager. You know, I heard a lot of people didn't like this match. I thought it was fine. You know, it was short. And then, uh, you know, Angelo and Matt Menard came out and Brock and Arn ran him to the back. And then uh, Wardlow hit the Powerbomb Symphony 1. And then Christian Luchasaurus appeared on the big screen. Christian said, Luchasaurus accepts your challenge for this coming Saturday. But what are you going to do when your new daddy isn't there to save you? And they lower the camera and Arn is covered in blood. Been beaten. We had Tanahashi. He, not beaten, bludgeoned. Bludgeoned in the head. Yes. Tanahashi does a promo. It says, last year I came this close to beating Moxley. This year I won MJF one-on-one. So Rene goes to interview Max, and he says, I am not defending my title against some dude from a rinky-dink promotion in Japan. If Tony tries to book this match, it would not be the first time that I no-showed a booking. And so between that and the Adam Cole thing and the fact that they noted that he has been champion, I forget how long they said, I don't remember, it's like, what, eight, nine months or something like that, and he's defended the title three times. I mean, what's clearly going to happen here is, you know, Tony's going to have to announce that you either, you know, give Adam Cole another shot, another, uh, you know, uh, whatever they call it, title eliminator, and you defend the title against Tanahashi at Forbidden Door, or you will be stripped of the title. I think they're going to have to do a storyline like that. Well, with Cole, you have time. You know, you have plenty of time before August or September for him to fight back or get that match. I think when you want to pull out that since there's no 30-day rule, but you put out that whole, you are going to show up, it should be for this match with uh, with Tanahashi. We had Orange Cassidy being interviewed when Zack Sabre Jr. showed up. You know, I don't like to go on my uh, high horse here, but you know who's uh, a big hoss of a man lately is Zack Sabre Jr. Oh, listen to this. He's not a skinny chicken chest anymore. And you know what I have not heard one time in the last year or so since he bulked up. You know what I haven't heard one time? I haven't heard one time. You know, I sure don't like his matches anymore because it just doesn't work you know unless what? he's a skeleton I man. haven't heard one time. Not one time. You just time. go back and apologize for always saying that stuff about him because now you sound like the people that talk about no, Adam Cole. Every this, time you would this, bring up Zack Sabre this Jr., is it was silly. This is revisionist history, Mike. Oh, because boy. It now was it's revisionist history? Juice Robinson. Mm-hmm. Juice Robinson ridiculed him for being a chicken chest. Not me. Juice Robinson. So don't take this out on me like everybody else tries to do. Now, anyway, he shows up, and then Garcia's there. And long story short, next week, it is going to be Orange Cassidy and Katsuyori Shibata against Zack Sabre Jr. and Daniel Garcia. That's a wacky match. I like it. Yes. And do you know what was, I thought, for the time they had a great match... And I still believe, other people have said there was an Athena match, but I see this as the best Sky Blue match I've ever seen. <laughs> it was Tony Storm and Sky Blue. And granted, as a fair man... The, Sky Blue is the the Cora Jade that Brian wants to, to have. The, that, that's what he wants Cora to be. Is don't like even Blue. start this thing here. <laughs> But the the match, the four-way that they had to determine who would face Tony Storm, even Jim Ross called that bowling shoe ugly. <laughs> so Sky had something to prove here, and Tony Storm was great. And this was an excellently booked match. And uh, Tony got the win. I mean, the best spot was when Tony uh, Ruby takes a ref, Tony gets a spray bottle. She sneaks in, but Sky Blue has her own spray bottle. She sprays Tony. Tony does a deal where you, you run in place and shake your head like uh, Brandon Cutler. She's being sprayed. And then as she's being sprayed, she tosses her can. The can flies into the air right across from the hard cam. You see all these fans reaching up to grab it. Some guy catches it. The place is going nuts. Sky Blue hits a storm zero, but the ref is still distracted. And it's an easy pin. But then she goes after Ruby, turns around. Tony hits her with Storm Zero, but Sky kicks out. And then Sky puts her, or Tony puts her in the sharpshooter, submits her. 
that was a great match. Now that really sh- was a great match. Make sure you do something with Sky because how that thing was booked, it was done really, really well. Now follow up with her. I hope she's ready and ready to be in that position because they did a great job, and I don't think Tony could have given her any more. Now everyone's having to talk about this this uh, this feud between Cora Jade and Sky Blue. What you want me to take sides? What kind of a journalist would I be? <clears throat> Jungle Boy and Hook did a promo, or as I like to call them, Hook Boy. And uh, and man, poor Hook. <laughs> Jungle Boy says, "You know, you're not just my tag partner; you're my best friend, and I'm gonna accept this match against Sonata." For the IWGP title, and it would mean so much to me, everything to me, if you could just be in my corner for that match. Man, oh even man. if he's being sincere, he's a heel to me. I'm telling you guys, <laughs> nobody, nobody back, ever bro. listens to me. But <laughs> Jungle Boy is a heel is going to be incredible. He's going to be an incredible heel, and it's going to turn his career around. Mark my words. Then we had BCC against the Bucks and Hangman. This match was great. They only got about 11 minutes. If they would have got more time, it would have been even better. But, you know, they brawled at the beginning. They did the big comeback at the end. Really, the only thing that was missing would have been a longer period with the BCC just murdering dudes. And so they do all their big spots there at the end. And finally, the Bucks hit the BTE trigger on poor Yuta. Hangman hits the Buckshot. They get the pin. And then the heels go after the baby faces after the match, and they're beating them down. And who should come down to the ring but the returning Eddie Kingston? He goes face-to-face with Claudio. The fans are going nuts with Eddie Chance. He ends up wiping him out, but he turns around. He's face-to-face with Moxley again. Matt jumps Moxley. Moxley pops up. He goes back face-to-face with Kingston. So they have not split. They're old friends, but something's up. They don't agree with what the other is doing. And then Takeshita hits the ring, massive boos, to the point where, uh, you know, there were, there were people, you know, that thing on your phone that tells you if the decibels are too loud or whatever? People's gimmick went off as, as him and, uh, and uh, Callus are coming down to the ring. And then Omega's music hits. He goes after Takeshita. Elite attacks Takeshita. They all hit Pescados to the outside. Kenny hits his V trigger. Everyone's going nuts. But, man, Kenny turns around, and he's super kicked by Will Ospreay. And Will Ospreay hits him with a hidden blade, the Stormbreaker, another hidden blade. This segment was awesome. You built up so many great things in this for uh, future Dynamite shows, for Forbidden Door. I mean, man, that was a home run segment and a great show. Yeah, I didn't think it was perfect, but I liked the closing segment. It was a lot of chaos. There was a lot going on, and Takeshita's there, and now Kingston's there, and Osprey's there, and all that stuff. But, I mean, I, I to me, it worked. And if you're an AEW fan, I think it worked. If you're the casual watching, okay, it's like every other show that you turn on late and there's chaos happening. And maybe you want to rewind and, and find out more of what's going on, but I thought it was very good. People comparing it to Impact and doing that sort of stuff. I mean, if that's what you thought, cool. I just don't think that this this actually, you know, reached anywhere near. I will tell level. you why after the break that this wasn't TNA. There's plenty of reasons why. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. This is my this is my TNA litmus test for these angles. Okay. I've been uh, doing this for a long, long time. And before I did what you're watching right now, I wrote a newsletter. For a long, long time. I have written millions of words in my lifetime. And the point is, I can type really fast, okay? If I'm watching an angle, and I cannot... Type fast enough to recap everything that's going on, and I have to pause and or rewind. Too much stuff is going on. That is my litmus test. It happened all the time in TNA. It's like, I, 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 I can't keep up. Like, I can't recap everything. Typing, okay? And you know where, you know where else it happens? NXT. Like, it happens fairly regularly in NXT. But, you know, if I see an angle and a lot of stuff happens... 
but I can very easily recap everything without having to stop and rewind, that's a good angle because that means that everything that happened, there is time to breathe. There is time for it to register in your brain as to what's going on. Whereas when when it happens too fast for me to type what's going on, it's like no way when you're watching it are you going to remember everything that happened. Or if you can remember, will it all be meaningful? You've got to let things breathe. And that's exactly what they did last night. It was perfectly timed. There was a lot that happened at the very end of the show with some bloke going, 30, 15, and they got it all in. And Granny, did you know that in the room right now is an Emmy Award winner? I know. I want to congratulate you, Wow. Sean. Thank you. The only one here who's ever achieved anything of value. Nice work, Shane. <laughs> Way to go, buddy. <laughs> Let's see this big gold Emmy. Wow. Look oh, at that, everybody. Wow. Holy smokes. That qualifies. That's Prefer to hold it by thing. the bottom to it as well. Let's get a picture for the front page. Yeah, you want it. <laughs> <laughs>